Hey everybody, uh, my name is Cheyenne. If you've seen my previous video, you know that I am planning on through hiking the Appalachian Trail in February of 2023. So grad school is done, the holidays are past, and I have a few more days off work. So I figured now would be as good a time as any to go through what's in my pack who has been lovingly dubbed Big Bertha for right now because she chonky. Um, <laughs> I'm still playing around with how I want to pack her. Um, everything is in right now, so that's fine. Uh, if I can figure out a way, weight's distributed well, but if I can figure out a way to make it look a little bit more compact, that'd be great. Um, so let's start with the pack itself. Let's get over a little bit. Um, this is the REI Flash 55. I've used it for work, which entails traipsing through the backcountry, not on trails, um, you know, 20 miles a day. So, and it held up really well, limited shoulder pain. Um, granted, it wasn't quite as heavy, probably close. Um, I think right now with food, it's sitting at Ah, uh, what did I say? 26 pounds, I think, right around in there. So add two liters of water, that'd be around 30 pounds. So um, I think its max carrying capacity is recommended to be 35 pounds. Um, but yeah, so it was a little lighter, but through pretty intense backcountry hiking, um, it carried really well and I was really pleased with it. Um, it does a good job of keeping water out. Um, you know, I've been in the rain with it and all of that. Um, so there's better specs online. I might go into in depth in other videos if I get around to it. Maybe not though. Um, but yeah, so it's got this main brain at the top, which has a rain shield pocket. Right now I have my first aid stuff and my technology in there, I think. Um, it's got, you can take some of the pack mod accessories off, which include these straps, the hip belt pockets, and then there's a shoulder pocket as well. Um, so all those can come off and I think it saves you, I think the website said around seven ounces. I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, they're handy. Um, I wouldn't mind if they were like a little bit more of a boxier shape, but whatever. The more space you have, the more you fill it with, right? <laughs> um, I think it's somewhere around 32 ounces, yada, 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 but it's very supportive. I tend to have back pain a lot, so I would love to have, you know, a 15 ounce backpack, but I don't, I'm not brave enough to even attempt that. Um, so I will start by, I guess, disassembling what I have in it. Um, over on this side, I have what is essentially going to be my sit pad. And since I am starting in February, it's going to double as an extra layer for really cold nights under my sleeping pad. It's a Mountain Laurel Designs uh, 1 8 inch foam, body length. It's probably the largest size I think that they had. Um, it's also sparkly, I like it. I have a white Sharpie pen I'm going to write up on one side of it just to try and keep one side a little bit cleaner. Not that it'll matter, we're on a trail. Um, but that's the hope, that way if I do use it in shelters under something, granted my tent ground sheet will probably go under it, I don't know, we'll see. But that way it's not like in direct content with mouse poop. Yay mice. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. But either way, that's my sit pad. Um, in this pocket as well, I have all of my tent stakes. Um, I have the Big Agnes Mountain Glow um, Tiger Wall UL2 for two people because I like having a little bit of extra space. Um, also, I'm a large person. I like space. <laughs> um, Tent stakes are in this little baggie. I probably won't keep them in the little bag, but whatever. Uh, tent stakes and tent poles. Those don't really need to be kept out of the rain, so 
for now though their their home is the side pocket <laughs> I also have my... Yeah, that's definitely my 10 flag. footprint, not my so rain flag. The thought process <laughs> is if it gets wet in the rain, um, I probably won't want to put it in my bag. So, and it fits in the side pocket, so it's probably just going to stay in the side pocket. We will see, though. Um, that is it for that side pocket. You should probably check the video to make sure you can still see what I'm doing. So, give me a second. Full 30 pound fact just hit my leg. Oh, God, I'm stuck. Uh, let's go to the other side pockets. I have been playing around with the pack mods, which are the hip belt pockets, that kind of thing. Um, there's quite a few ways you could attach them. I played around with putting it right there. I don't know if it'll stay there. I don't hate it. Um, and it does kind of help keep my hiking poles in, but I feel like that might just get in the way of trying to get them off. Um, let's see. We'll just get them off, right? <laughs> Easier said than done. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, well, it's not that bad, I guess. Um, they're securely in there, that's for sure. These are my trekking poles. They are Cascade Mountain Tech. Um, I forgot which ones exactly. I think they're one of the lighter ones you can get. Um, I got them off Amazon. I think they're also the Costco brand. I don't know. Um, I haven't actually used them yet. I'm not a big trekking pole person. I assume that will change when I'm on trail, but I have them. Um, they seem nice. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think I've seen a lot of other people recommend them as a budget brand or as like a good budget option. Um, I don't currently have anything in this pocket. Um, when I did, I had my uh, battery bank, which I guess I can get right now. Um, it is an Anchor 20,000. I love this thing. It charges my iPhone from empty, basically empty to full about probably four or five times, plus another couple smaller charges. It's about a pound, I think, maybe 12 ounces, um, but I love it. It does a great job and it's not that bad to recharge. If I'm staying somewhere overnight, it's gonna be plugged in all night anyways. So that normally goes in this pocket. Um, it is a water resistant pocket. I would also have it in a Ziploc in the pocket and I would probably throw my headlamp. Let me go ahead and get that. Um, I recently just got a new headlamp. It's the Petzl Bindi. It is rechargeable. I initially had a much heavier one. That would have been fine um, with a thicker headband and it had batteries. I just didn't want the thicker headband and I liked that it's more compact, smaller, don't have to carry batteries. I can charge it from my uh, power bank. Um, and I really liked that it had the smaller strap and that this kind of changes around so you can wear it on your neck because that's probably where I'd end up wearing it the most. Um, also a main reason I upgraded a big selling point was this has the red light on it. My other one did not. Um, and I thought that would be a good low light option for like if I just had to get to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I'm not waking everybody up with my bright light. So that's my headlamp. Those would probably be in a Ziploc in this pocket, whether this pocket is on my hip or not, that's where it would go. Next is one of my favorite pieces of equipment. It is my cool cloth. Um, like I said, I work outside a lot where bathrooms aren't available. This cool cloth is very nice. Um, it's a nice toilet paper alternative. For number one not number two um and this one's a special spooky season one i'll try and get a close-up i don't know if everybody could see it earlier but doesn't smell you can use it for a few days wash it in town throw it in the wash it's great i love it we'll leave out some of the other details i guess if you have questions feel free to let me know also, if you don't follow Kula Cloth on social media, i.e. Instagram, they're hilarious. 
Don't know what their marketing plan is, but it's funny. I like it. So that'll stay on my pack. Um, that's it for the side pockets. Now on to the front little meshy mesh. So I have my little water bag. It's a little meshy mesh because it's going to be wet, so I figured it'll just dry out. Um, I have a three liter Seenock bag I will probably use for when I need water carries. Um, otherwise, that's probably more than six pounds of water. So if I don't need to carry that much water, I'm not going to. But it is very handy to get um, just for water collection purposes. Um, if nothing else, I'll probably fill it up, fill up my two one liter smart water bottles. And then that'll leave me with a liter in here um, to carry. So I probably won't carry it full, but it's nice to have. It's easy to fill up with the wide mouth. Um, I've used it. I love it. I actually have two, but I don't think I'm going to bring two. I just don't think I'm going to need it. Um, but yeah, love it. That's coming with. Next, I have my, oh, my nose itches. Sorry, squeeze. Uh, used it, loved it, gonna keep going with it. A little bit worried about it freezing in February, so I'll have to keep it in my pocket near my body. Um, love it. Next, I have blah, 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 the connector thing for the Sawyer Squeeze. The Sawyer Squeeze. Um, it's a plastic thing. It works well. Just don't tighten it too much or else it does not work well. You gotta leave a little bit of airflow. Um, next, I have like the little a little pill bottle bottle of the Aquatab. I think that's what they're called. I don't remember. Um, it's a backup for in case my filter does freeze or if it's just nasty water and I want to be sure. Um, last time I went out on the AT for a quick section hike, um, I used these in addition to my Sawyer. Stomach bugs aren't fun, um, so whatever. They're very lightweight. I've got a good amount in here. So they'll be nice, especially for the winter when I might be worried about my filtration system freezing on me. So that's in a little mesh bag that probably weighs not much and it goes in my little mesh front pocket. I can hook it from a carabiner, all of that. Currently also in my front pocket is my rain gear. Um, this is just REI stuff. Um, not the lightest stuff in the world, but again, I've used them in the rain. They work well. I don't remember the name of them specifically. It's in my lighter packs, um, but it's got the rimmed hood that I like, uh, vented armpits. I like it. And I have the matching pants, easy to put on. Um, I wear a long in pretty much everything, so they're probably heavier than regulars. I like them. I was gonna go for frog togs and I don't know. I just figured for the winter, I want something that won't fail on me, won't rip easily, and worst comes to worst, can act as a as another layer um, for heat retention. Cause let me tell you, when I wear these in the middle of summer, I'm hot. <laughs> so that's my rain gear. Um, I'll probably end up sending the pants home at some point. Um, in the summer, I don't necessarily worry all that much about being wet because it's going to be hot anyways. I'll dry. Um, that's my rain gear for now. I'll probably send the pants home in the summer once it warms up. I'll probably keep the jacket because it's a good jacket. Um, I don't know. I don't necessarily see the need to buy frog togs, I guess, right now. Um, it would be lighter and I might not wear it all that much in the summer, so... It's not unreasonable that I send both of these home and just get a frog tog jacket. Um, so yeah, so what are we on now? Okay, let's do the brain. So right now, all I have in my brain is first aid and hygiene kit, um, a mask, hand warmers, a uh, couple hand warmers. No, maybe I'll go through this in more detail later. Um, maybe a pound. I don't know. But I'm happy with it so far. Um, general first aid hygiene stuff that I would typically use like once a day. 
Um, and then in this baggie, it's my kind of throughout the day kit. Um, I'll have enough layers on in the winter. I don't think I'll need my sunscreen. I shouldn't need bug spray. So that's not in here, but it could be. Um, it's my Rology cork massage ball. Figure that would be nice to have out on breaks and I should use it. I have a little thing of Tylenol and then Carmex because my lips like to be chapped. I don't know if you can see, but yeah. So that would go in probably one of my hip belt pockets, whereas the rest of this stuff I don't need throughout the day. It would stay in my pack somewhere. Right now that's the brain. Um, in this little hip belt pocket, I have pretty sure my inhaler and a knife. Not a big knife, just a knife. Oh, my inhaler is not even in there. It should be because I have asthma. Um, otherwise, it's just kind of a small, maybe two, three inch blade. Um, one for emergency situations. Uh, not necessarily personal defense, but I mean, I rather have something than nothing if it comes to it. Um, whether that's, I don't know, whatever. Um, but also the last time I went on the trail, a lot of times when I'm outdoors, I'm like, oh man, I need to cut something. Whether that's, I can't get the packaging open, open for some of my food for whatever reason, even though it's idiot proof. <laughs> um, Sometimes I just can't. Um, a knife is handy to have, um, emergency si situations, first aid, repair. It's just handy to have a knife on you. It's really a multi-purpose item, not just for self-defense, but push comes to shove. If you need something, you have something and that's better than nothing. So don't come for me for my knife. Um, okay, so on this side, I have a water bottle holder that will hold my smart water bottles. Um, I don't remember what kind it is. My sister-in-law got it, my hiking partner. I'll link her YouTube channel. She has a lot of videos. She's awesome. Um, don't remember what brand, but I like it. It works well. Um, I don't think it fit on her pack initially, so she just sent it to me, and I love her for that. Thank you. Um, I bought a cheap little watch off of Amazon. It's like a Casio something, water resistant. Um, I saw maybe Jesse Hikes has, maybe the same one, I don't know. Um, but she had a watch and made a good point. It's nice to be able, if you want to set an alarm for days you know you need to get up early, it's nice to have an alarm that's not your phone. Um, or if I want to check the time, I don't have to constantly turn my phone on and off or just illuminate it to check the time. And that should be battery savings. So I probably won't wear it on my wrist. I might. I don't know. Uh, but for now, I have it strapped on my bag. It's just one less thing I have to rely on my phone for and can conserve battery for. Um, next is my Garmin InReach Mini. Um, it's great. It's small. It's light. I've used it. Uh relatively easy um it's lasted me a few days with minimal use um i like it i will probably i well i have to but i'll update my um subscription closer to trail and get probably the medium tier so that i can get a weather update as well in my rain shield pocket um it can fit my iphone it's just a tight fit um also, sometimes this little snap pops open, um, so I just don't know if I'll have my phone in there all the time. For now, I have my poop shovel, hand sanitizer, and a little bit of toilet paper. I don't know if this is where this stuff's going to stay for now, but it works. I'm not against it. We'll see. Um, that's it for those, so I guess we can go into the pack. around Bertha like I said she chunky she stuffed the one thing I don't have right now is a pack liner um 
figure out what it's called. I'll probably either use a trash compactor or one of those really thin clear plastic bags that everybody recommends. I think I have a few of those thanks to Laura. Um, I just don't have it in my pack yet because I figured less use is less use. Okay. Whoop. Okay. So I have my a bandana that is wrapped around my cook pot and stove. Um, one, because it's kind of nice to have something hot or something to help you hold a hotter pot. Uh, two, wipe down. I'm going to carry a bandana anyways. And it's a nice, easy way to tie it up instead of using the weird baggie that it comes with. So, bandana. Um, I'm using a hoax titanium pot. I think it's the 500 milliliters. It fits enough water for if I want to do coffee and a a dehydrated meal, it's enough water for that. So that's all I need. I don't plan on cooking in my pot because I don't want to have to clean it out and wash it every night. I feel like that's a pain. Um, also the one time I did, I got little burn spots on the bottom. So that's that. And then I have the little BRS stove. I don't have my gas canister right now. Super lightweight, works well. <clears throat> I know people really love their jet boils. Um, who knows, maybe I'll upgrade on trail, but I just, at this point, I don't necessarily see the need uh, waste weight wise. Um, and this works well for me. Again, I'm not gonna be cooking in my pot. I'm just gonna be boiling enough water for my meals. Um, yeah. And even then I probably won't even be doing coffee all that much. I'm currently weaning myself off coffee, which reminds me I have tea. Pause. <laughs> So continuing with what's in my pack. Um, next, I have my tent. It's a Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2. It has the Mountain Glow feature available on it, which is essentially like itty bitty string lights and a battery pack uh, that go around the top. I like it. Um, the weight of two batteries doesn't really bother me. I'm just gonna carry them with. If they die, I might not replace them I don't know we'll see um but it's not worth it enough for me to try and take them out um and it is kind of nice having lights available to me um I have another video already of when I first got the tent probably about a year ago uh feel free to check that out I love it um okay next is my main sleeping pad um it is a thermarest a uh, long, wide, again, I am a tall person. I am not petite at all. Um, and for a winter start, I wanted to ensure that I would have as much warmth as possible. Um, also, I really hate sleeping on a sleeping pad and my arms fall over the side. I hate it, hate it. So this is super comfy. I, it's a Pro Light Apex. Um, it's not noisy. It's the one, the type that, what is it? Closed cell, open cell, something. I, like I said, I have asthma. The thing I don't want to do at the end of a long day of hiking is blow up a pad from scratch. Um, if I open the nozzle, air will come in and it will basically half inflate, if not more. Um, and then I just fill it up to my preference, which honestly, I don't even fill it up all the way. Um, I like having a little bit of give on it. It's a little more comfy for me. Um, but yeah, it doesn't crinkle like a bag of potato chips. It's comfy, fits me. I love it. I do wish it packed down smaller. I'm sure I could do a better job than this, but, um, I do love it. Uh, the fact that it packs down small is not something I am willing to go with a lesser item for yet. So that's that. I have... This is an update to my equipment. If you did watch my um, tent video, that is both a new sleeping pad. Um, I did like the Trail Scout, but unfortunately, while I was using it this summer, um, it got like a big bubble in it, so it didn't really work anymore. Um, 
that could be a I bought it off Amazon thing. It could be counterfeit. I don't know. But either way, this one, the Prolite Apex, is more comfortable. Uh, the other one was fine as well. Packed down a little smaller. Um, but I'm happy with this one. I like it. It's a little more of a normal feel instead of a little bit sticky rubbery. So I'm fine with it. So next, this is an update as well. My quilt. If you followed that video, um, I had a Featherstone Moon Dance 25 quilt. Um, and I liked it. It worked very well. It's a good, I hate to say budget option because it's still 200 and something dollars. Um, but it's a good budget option. Um, I used it in the summer and we had some cool, cooler nights. Um, I even used it on the AT when the nights got down to like 32 and granted my husband was in the tent next to me. So, um, it wasn't just my body heat in the tent, but I was very cozy in it. Um, but I did not start in February and it was a one week trip. So there was less chance of bad weather, <laughs> even though we hit the worst of it. But I digress. Um, I'm a cold sleeper. My husband's not going to be there. My trail partner, she went out with her 10 degree enlightened equipment bag, hit cold weather and said she was freezing. Um, so that was kind of just like, I'm not risking it. There's going to be a lot of months like we're starting in February. That's potentially three, three months, maybe even four that we can encounter bad weather cold weather. I don't want to be freezing. I've seen a lot of people's videos. Like I know maybe Jesse Hikes had some really cold nights. There was um, a couple people from last year. They had really cold nights. I rather be prepared. So that's the moon dance is going to be my summer bag. Um, it's a 25, but honestly, it's probably closer to a 30. Um, but that's fine. I'll use it like a sheet and it'll be comfy. It works fine for that. I love it. This is a zero degree enlightened equipment. It is both long and wide. Um, it's just the standard 850 fill. It is ginormous. <laughs> it takes up a lot of space in my bag. It is down. I think I just need to play around with how I'm packing to get it to compress more. Um, to be more compact. But otherwise, it's nice and warm and cozy. So between that and my sleep system, I think I'm gonna be good. So we upgraded that during the Black Friday sales when it was still a little bit cheaper. Okay, next is my bear bag, my food hang bag. It is by Cloud Gear. I ended up, um, it's the biggest size they have. I think that's the huge. I think it's large and huge. I think I got the huge, whatever the biggest size bag is. That's what I got. Um, I did a custom one because I wanted pictures of my husband and my doggies with me and I like pretty things. So I designed this on Canva. I sent the pictures to cloud gear <clears throat> and they did a really awesome job with it. It looks great. Um, I even have a couple pictures of my grandpa added on it. You can't see it because it's down below the table. Um, here, let's move it closer. <clears throat> so I have my dogs, my grandpa, my husband, um, a couple sayings. On this side, I did a little AT map. It's not perfect, but it's what I did. Um, and then I'm really proud of the bottom, honestly. It says... These are not the snacks you're looking for. Um, and it's like a little artistic outdoors piece with Star Wars superimposed on it. I love it. I'll try and post pictures. I don't know how that came out. But um, right now it's got about four days of food in it. So there's still room. Um, there's still room. Uh, but yeah, it's good. Okay, what's next? Huzzah. Oh, my clothes bag. So for clothes, um, this hoodie is a smart wool, merino wool, 
Um, I think like a 250. I like it. I've used it for work in like 15 degree weather. Super warm. Love it. It's great. Um, I also got it because it has a hood. And while it is not a very flattering hood, it hugs my ears, which get cold very easily and hurt really bad when they're cold. So that's what I wanted. And then also I like that this covers my the bottom of my face some. So that was the main reason why. <clears throat> um, I love it. It's toasty. It's warm. If I'm hiking, I probably won't need my puffy. But, but I also have a puffy, which is just an Amazon cheapie. It doesn't have a hood, um, but it's worked out well in Colorado winters for two, three years. So I'm just going to keep it. It also has these inside pockets that will be nice to keep my filter in. So that's nice. Um, I have sleeping clothes, which are Old Navy Merino wool base layers. I like them. I was able to order them in a long, so I don't have to worry about my ankles being super cold. Um, they're not 100% Merino wool. I think it was maybe 40% Merino wool. Um, but again, I've used these as my base layers for work when I'm outside, and they help to keep me very warm. I'm not really worried about them. I tried on REI. I In Smart Wool equivalents, I tried on the REI brand base layers and the Smart Wool base layers. These are probably like 150 weight, equal to the 150 weight in terms of um, thickness and warmth. These were the most comfortable, um, and I liked the fit the best. The waistband is comfy. Um, I didn't get that like woolly itch. Um, I seem to be a little sensitive to wool and it's just sometimes it just like itches and it irritates me and I can't. These were the most comfortable probably because they're not 100% but they did keep me very very warm. So these are my sleeping pants. Um, I have a sleeping shirt, long sleeve sleeping shirt in the exact same thing from Old Navy. Um, I actually have two of the shirts. They have thumb holes. I love it. I can order longs, so they're not short on my long people arms. Um, again, they've worked great as a base layer for me. Uh, we'll see when we're out on trail, but again, I've worked outside in like 15 degree weather. If I'm hiking... That's a lot more intensity than what I was doing outside, so I'm probably going to be okay between all my layers. I have two of the long sleeve shirts. One is for sleeping. One is going to be my hiking top um, in summer because I can. I like pushing the sleeves up, sleeves up anyway. So if it's warmer, I'll just push them up. Um, it's part merino wool. It, sh it breathes well, so that's going to be that. In summer, I might change to a short sleeve. We'll see. Um, I have <clears throat> a pair of underwear. They are, I forgot what they're called, icebreaker. They're icebreaker sirens, I think. Got them at REI. I like them. I don't know if I'm bringing in Gingy socks. Um, the last time I wore them, I wore them mainly for warmth. And I ended up getting a little bit of a blister on the back of my heel. Um, so I, I might not bring them. They were nice as an extra layer for warmth. I don't, I'm on the fence though. Um, my main sock for hiking will be Darn Tufts. I'm going to bring two of the, uh, uh, what is that, quarter length? Uh, one is more of a midweight and more of a more one one is more of a midweight <laughs> one is going to be more of a lighter weight um, and then I'm also going to have a third pair for sleeping which is going to be a little bit the um the crew length those are going to be my socks I might bring the engine cheese I don't know um I'm still working on the glove situation I have these REI co-op merino wool liner gloves with I think these are supposed to be touchscreen fingers but they don't really do that um I've used these for work under smart wool gloves and they've kept my hands pretty warm 
So my plan was to bring both. I'll tell you why my plan might change in a second. Um, and then I guess my last piece of clothing, I'm just going to be wearing regular running shorts. Um, if I need warmth, I'll put on, if it's really bad, I'll wear a base layer. Um, but I have my rain pants. Um, I'm also probably either going to bring leggings or my hiking pants that I love. They are cool, cool, cool. Um, I forgot the type. Freeflex? Freeflex, I think. Um, I like them. They're comfy. I don't chafe in them. I'm still on the fence about bringing them, though, because I really do prefer to hike in shorts. And honestly, as long as my top is warm, my legs don't really care. Okay. Oh, I think I still have. Oh, yes. And then my favorite little luxury item is my Thermarest foam pillow. It condenses really well. It's super comfortable. Um, I don't have pain when I sleep with this. Um, it compresses well and then it builds back up once you let it. <laughs> it's worth the wait for me. I've slept with just a clothes bag. Um, I've slept without anything. I've tried multiple things. This is the most comfortable and it will help keep my head warm. So that's that. So the rest of my clothing, I have been very lucky this year and I won giveaways on social media. That doesn't happen for me, but it did multiple times this year and I am stoked. So the most recent thing I won is Enlightened Equipment just during the holidays. They did some giveaways and I won, I think it was the first day it's their Torrid line of insulating clothing accessories. So I won a hood, which is kind of nice. Again, I don't know if I'm going to pack everything. I have to make sure I can get it to fit in my bag. Um, but I don't have a hood on my puffy, so this is really nice. The second thing they sent were the Torrid mitts. Um, I don't like having cold hands, so this is kind of where the gloves come into play. I might just bring one of the pair of gloves and then pack these in. Um, they're a little large on my hand. I measured, according to their website, they're a little large, but that's fine. Normally gloves are really small on me. Plus side is they also fit my husband, so when I'm off trail, he can use them during the winter when he's doing band conducting things outside. Um, so yeah, mitts, Torrid mitts, Torrid down hood. And then I got the famous Torrid booties and I'm stoked. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, they have like really cool little cinches. They fit. <laughs> how many times can I say I'm stoked? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I don't know how many times, if I'm going to bring all three, I'm going to play around with packing my pack. Um, if I can get them all to fit, I'll probably bring them all and then just send them home when they're no longer needed or useful but I like having them <laughs> um the other thing I won in a giveaway is my wallet which I was really happy about because I was really looking forward to it Kaylee hikes on Instagram is a really big fan of chicken tramper gear um so of course when I started planning for the AT I figured I would follow all of these companies as I'm working on getting gear updating stuff whatever Anyways, I loved these ultralight wallets. I was kind of just biding my time to bite the bullet and just get one. Um, I wanted something small. I wanted something colorful and easy to see. And most of all, lightweight and extremely water resistant. And she ended up doing a giveaway, taking over their social media for a day and then doing a giveaway. I didn't win the fanny pack, but I did win the wallet. Um, I chose a seam sealed one because it's more water resistant than their sewn ones. And I'm super excited, super excited. So this will be my trail wallet. Highly would recommend. I've been using it every day as an actual wallet and I love it. Um, I did forget two things. I will be back. Next, we have my camp shoes. Chacos. Yes, Chacos. 
Um, they're actually the new Chacos, which are ultra light. Um, not really ultra light, but they're the lightest pair of Chacos that they have. Um, they are the Bodhi, B-O-D-H-I sandals. I've worn them a few times out. I like them. I would like to go on a hike in them to see if they're as comfortable as the um, like ZX2s that I'm used to wearing. Um, I love hiking in Chacos if the weather's good and conditions are good. I, if it's 32 degrees or above, I'm in Chacos. So these are my camp shoes. I'll probably hike in them a good amount. Um, I, I'm not willing to go with flip flops or Crocs. I hate Crocs. Chacos for life. Um, and then my hiking shoes are, of course, Ultra Lone Peaks. These are the sixes that just went on sale for 40% off at REI because the sevens came out. Um, this is my new pair. I wore them once so far, which is why they're muddy. I love these shoes. These are the most comfortable shoes. Like I said, I live in Chacos. And if I'm not in Chacos, I'm barefoot. <laughs> I'm somewhere where I can be barefoot. Um, so the zero drop doesn't bother me. I'm happy with it. I have, like I've said multiple times, I'm a large person. I'm about 6'2". I have size 11 feet. Um, they're a giant. Um, and I like being barefoot. So I like having the roomy toe box. These have been the best shoes I've ever hiked in. Um, for work, I do 20 mile days in the backcountry, not on trail. So that means climbing over logs. That means very uneven territory. That means hiking on, you know, a, a very steep incline sideways. Um, I have never once gotten a blister in these shoes with just darn tough socks. So these are my trail shoes. If anything changes that on trail, I will be very surprised and I'll be very sad that I have to try and find a new pair of shoes. Um, but this is what I'm wearing. Um, these are technically a men's because I was more comfortable in the men's than the women's. So they're a men's 10 and a half. Um, like I said, they just, I tried on a women's in my size and I tried on a few different sizes in the women's and the men's. And this is just what felt more comfortable. So those are my shoes. And they're black and I love that for me. Yeah, so that's my gear. Um, I might do smaller breakdown videos or just break this into smaller videos. I don't know yet. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Anything can change on trail. I might change up what I have, but right now these are options that I'm happy with, choices that I've made, I'm comfortable with, even if some seem like a luxury. Um, like I said, my pack carries the weight well. If I end up changing stuff later on, I will. Um, but this has been a few years in the making and being tested and trying stuff out. So this is probably what I'll leave with in February. So thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Uh, so this is editing Cheyenne. Editing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not doing much, but I'm trying to clean it up a little bit for you guys. Uh, I don't really make scripts and I just kind of ramble. So you either like it or you don't. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so let's see. So I realized that yesterday I forgot a few items. Um, some were just hidden in some of my stuff sacks that I didn't completely go through. So food related for my food bag and two others are clothing items. Again, I use these for work. So sometimes they just get scattered around <laughs> and I lose them for a little bit. <clears throat> Kula cloths. So that's giving me anxiety. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to stop working a week before trail just so that I can make sure I can find all of my items. It's a little ridiculous. But so two of the items are clothing items. The first is a lightweight merino wool buff. Pretty sure just by the company buff. I got it at REI. I like this as an added addition to my hoodie. One, um, if I wanna keep the sun off of my neck, it's lightweight merino wool. It'll breathe in the summer if I choose to wear it. It'll help protect my neck. And also in the winter when it's cold, it's just added warmth for my head. I don't think I'm going to bring a beanie. So this will act as a beanie. And also for work, I've realized that I like having that extra layer over my mouth. Cause yes, my hoodie does go over my mouth but I have realized that that makes my hoodie a little moist from my breath. Um, so this just kind of adds like an extra area of protection from my hoodie so that if I wear it at night, it's not as wet. 
again, it dries quickly. It's not a big deal, but it's just one extra little lightweight thing. And if I'm not using it in summer, it can be a sweat rag. Second thing, I got a new hat. I am a hat person. Uh, I have baseball caps at home, but they're like the thick cottony ones. They don't dry very quick and I know I'm going to be sweating a lot. So um, I've got, a, what is it? Outdoor research one. It has an easy clip and a very quick, you know, adjuster in the back. Uh, it breathe, it's like a mesh material on the side. So it breathes really quick, dries really quick which I love because in the summer I like dipping this in like cold water and throwing it on my head for just to cool me down. So that'll be nice to not have a wet hat all day. Uh, I also uh, plan on bringing a hair clip as a luxury item. I like <laughs> having my hair up in a clip. It's comfortable. I like doing that at camp when I don't want it in a ponytail. Uh, it's just, it's a necessity for me. We'll see how long that lasts is not much weight so I'm gonna bring that with and this expands enough to let that fit so I can wear a hat while having my hair up in a clip Boop. like that <laughs> so those are the two clothing clothing items that I forgot the other two things are food related one my spork I am apparently team spork we oui. um and I did choose to get a polished bowl again Apparently I'm weird about textures. I'm fine, I, I, I can do it, but like I had the option to get the polished bowls, so I went for it because it will irk me just a little less. <laughs> uh, if you can see behind me, just, no you can't. It's a mess, I'm no, I'm sorry. So yeah, um, I did have a folding spoon from, it's, it'll be on my lighter packs in like the section of the things I almost brought. I don't remember the brand entirely. I liked it. It's a good option. It's lightweight. It fits in your pot. But the clasps it uses to, the clasp it uses to fold sometimes goes out. And I also realized I'm going to be doing a lot of freezer bag cooking. So like it'll just be a little more sanitary to use a longer spoon. I am carrying camp soap, but still. Uh, so the less my hand touches my food, that's probably for the best. I've had Noro before. I don't want it again. I can't handle that. I almost died in my comfy bed. That's a little bit of an exaggeration according to my nurse aunt. I don't think it was though. I don't want to deal with that out on trail in the wilderness. Yeah, so I decided to just bite the bullet, get a long spoon. It's annoying to pack, but whatever. It can just go in my food bag and it fits in there. My food bag's full anyways. Polish bowl. I went with a fork. Uh, I kind of like buying the like pre-mixed salads in the bag, like bag salads at the grocery store. And I like stuff that like I can stab. So... I went with the spork, multifunctional, I don't think. The second food related item that I realized I forgot about, it was stuffed into my food bag, smart me, um, is my Amazon mailer food insulator baggie. Laura and I are both probably gonna be doing a lot of freezer bag cooking. So before we went out on our initial section hike a year ago, uh, she talks about it more in her videos and we mentioned it in the interview I did with her. I made these from Amazon mailer bags, one for me, one for her, and she's been using it and liking it. I've been using it and liking it. It's literally just a larger mailer bag cut down, duct taped on the sides, a flat bottom so that it stands when it's full of a freezer bag of food. And then I put Velcro on the top to clasp it down. That way when you cook, you can just, you know, set it aside and it stands up. You don't have to worry about it. You can even stick your food spoon in the bag. But it was basically free to make. I really liked it. She did mention that she's been using it a lot more than I have mine. But as you can see, 
uh, she mentioned that hers broke the the velcro came off so I'm going to be making some new ones and I'm going well I'll probably just take my velcro off if I can without ruining it and just I have some contact cement I'm going to use that to reinforce them onto the mailer bag and that should probably hold really well again it's just a homemade thing so I kind of try to hold the edges of the velcro as I open it just it's not a professionally made thing the velcro isn't sewn on like so it should last a good amount of time she's used it a good amount so while I'm doing hers making her a new one I'm going to reinforce mine and probably make a few extras so that my husband can mail them out or bring them out to us if ours do fail on trail but they're really handy they work really well again they're not professionally made the hyperlight one and the ones on Etsy probably work well I'm just not really willing to spend 16 to 30 something dollars on one yet <laughs> uh, I really like them so if I can find the YouTube tutorial that I first used to make it I will link that below I hope I can if not I'm gonna have to kind of figure it out because I don't necessarily remember the details details uh, but yeah if I can find it I will link it it was super quick and easy other than that I think I'll come back up and go through my first aid kit and then it's all in one video Okay, so you've already seen this baggie. This is my first aid hygiene repair baggie that lives in the brain of my pack for now. So I'm going to go through it and kind of show you what I have in it right now. I think it's mostly complete. There's a few things I wanna put into different containers, but for the most part, it's there. So within that bigger bag, I have a smaller bag of less commonly needed items. Uh, so that includes things I won't need every day, shouldn't need every day. So I have a little pair of tweezers for ticks. Um, I might end up getting a small pair like this that has the very pointed ends because those tend to work better for ticks and splinters. Um, I have a small nail file slash nail clipper. It has the metal file on it. Um, I might keep that. I might just break a little piece of an emery board off and put that in here. Um, toe issues. I don't want to wish I had a nail clipper with. I know Laura's, I don't think Laura's bringing the, a nail clipper, so I'll have it. I have a mask. I've seen that some people, you know, I COVID's still around, so maybe I can't say the word. Maybe it'll blink my word. I don't know. I have a mask, comes in handy just in case. I have a couple pieces of moleskin. This isn't super helpful all of the time, but it's helpful enough that I want to have a piece or two around in case of a blister. Like I said, I have not had a blister yet in my ultras. I will be surprised if I get some, but I have it just in case. Uh, additionally, I have... Um, I'm going to be using a menstrual cup, a uh, Lena cup specifically, for my time of the month. That's TMI. Don't really care. Sorry. Um, I've used one for multiple years. It's what I'm more comfortable with. I highly recommend it to anybody that hasn't tried it. I wish I knew about it sooner. That's, <laughs> that's my spiel. Uh, but I will have a few backup items just in case a uh, couple pads, a couple small tampons. Additionally, I will bring one pair of foot warmer. Additionally, I will bring one pair of toe warmers. It's gonna be backwards, sorry. Uh, and then one pair of hand warmers. I can always pick up more at a store somewhere, but they are handy to ha have, especially if it's like in the teens. It's kind of a good emergency thing. There's nothing worse than being stuck in a semi-dangerous situation with your hands numbing up. Uh, so, like, you can't... We did that once on the approach trail. It was cold and rainy. I was trying to get a shelter up while we waited. Like, we were cold. I tried to get a shelter up while we waited for a shuttle driver, and I just, I could not use my fingers. They were so cold. So... I'm going to try and keep a pair, at least 
pair of hand warmers with me at all times, whether that's to sleep with just for extra comfort or just for the those emergency situations where I need to be able to use my fingers. Let's see, I will also have one little laundry detergent pod, just in case. If I don't need to use it, I won't use it, but if it means I don't have to buy like a whole thing, then I'll do that. I don't know, whatever, I can always ditch it. I will also have a few extra hair ties few extra hair ties because I have long hair. I do not want to be hiking with my hair down. And then I have a few pieces of gear aid, uh, clear and black. I don't know what side is what I think is those sides. Uh, clear and black for gear repair. Just in case I've already used one on my husband's hoodie and it worked or not hoodie, uh, puffy and it worked well. So uh, additionally, I will have kind of a combination of some meds. I'll have some antidiarrheals, a couple Benadryls just in case. I'm not really allergic to anything, but just in case, living in the woods. I'll also have a couple cold pills, like fever reducing pills, not just Tylenol to help with like actual cold symptoms. I've watched videos of people sick in their tents. I'm like, it's not gonna hurt having a couple doses of a cold medicine. So I'm gonna bring a few of those. Um, Tylenol is in my other little baggie. So I'll have that. I don't know what else. Oh, um, I'm gonna bring some band-aids just in case and a little bit of antibacterial uh, lotion, not lotion, gel. I can't think of what I'm thinking of. <laughs> I can't think of what I'm thinking of. Um, other than that, I have my knife to make a splint. I think I have enough like between my bandana and my buff, like if I need to like tie something, tie a wound to cut off the blood, blood supply. I think I'll be good. I might, I'm gonna double check my wilderness first aid guide and see if there's a few other things I can bring that would be helpful. Um, but otherwise, if there's a really big issue, like I think I can stop blood flow with what I have. I'm, I will probably bring a little bit of uh, leuco tape and gauze, like enough for like one big emergency maybe I think and then that might be it but I'm gonna look back through just to make sure I'm not missing anything that I should really have um next is the bat the rest of the baggy stuff that I'll use like once a day probably and that includes what's in here I forgot what I put in here let me see Oh, that's where my cord is. <laughs> I was looking for it. Uh, so in here, I also have my cords, my technology cords that I won't be using often. So like the ones that I'll only need when I'm in town. That way they're still accessible. I don't have to go to the bottom of my pack for them, but I also don't have to fight with them every time I want like my battery pack out or my headphones out. So it's my anchor wall port, the anchor charging cord, and then my phone cord. And I have a few other cords and stuff, but those are with the commonly used items. So like the connectors from the battery pack to my phone, to my Garmin, to my Petzl Bindi. Other than that, I also have a mirror brush duo. It's not a great brush. I don't love it, but it's small. It's a small brush. I've been thinking honestly about breaking off the mirror. It, it's not that much weight, but I don't really need it. I mean, I guess in an emergency situation, it might be useful, but I don't know. I'll probably just leave it because I'm lazy. But I also have some uh, lotion. Again, I think the words are back backwards, so I don't think it matters, but whatever some lotion, I get dry hands, whatever, it'll be nice. 
I have some body glide, just a small thing. I think it's like one ounce, two ounces. It doesn't actually say, shocking. Uh, just a small thing, just in case, especially with it being colder and me having to wear hiking pants instead of shorts, there's more chance for chafing. I have a little sunscreen stick. Uh, I think I'll be pretty much well covered during the winter aside from my face. So that's why it's in the just once a day thing. Uh, especially like if I'm not in, if I'm just under trees, I'm probably not going to put much on. Uh, so we're going to see how that works out and if I like it, but I have it. It'll probably be good for me to make a point to put on, especially during the summer months <clears throat> or like when I'm going over balds. I also have a little, it's an old body spray container from Bath and Body Works, <clears throat> but I filled it with bug spray. Uh, so I read somebody, I don't know, actually, it's a 15 milliliter little spray thing of bug spray. I read that somebody did this similar and barely used the whole thing. Uh, so I'm going to take this because this is probably more than enough bug spray and at the very least I'm sure I can find somebody that has bug spray that will give me 15 milliliters or there's some in a hiker box or some at a hostel that I can pilfer with permission 15 milliliters from so I don't think I need to carry more than this at one time I won't use more than this during one stretch I doubt if that changes I can pick up a new one next I have a travel toothbrush and an itty and an itty bitty toothpaste. I got this from a hotel that I stayed at and it's literally the smallest one I've ever seen. But I'm like, that's probably enough for a couple days. We'll see how many days specifically, but um, I can always pick up, I'm gonna start with this. I'll pick up either a new one at a resupply point. That's a more realistic size or I'll just keep getting travel sizes from hotels when we stay at hotels. Uh, let's see, I have my inhaler. This should be in a different pocket. <laughs> and then this, what did I put in here? It's not Dramamine, it says Dramamine, but it's not Dramamine. <sighs> my God, it's like stuck. Okay, it is still Dramamine, but I'm just gonna use the container for uh, pills. So uh, whatever pills I end up bringing, I know I'll have to bring my medicine, so. I'm just reusing these like travel containers that are small for pills. Other than that, I am bringing Q-tips. Uh, I really like cleaning my ears. Having my ears not be cleaned every day really bugs me. It's just one of my weird quirks again. Uh, but yeah, I will be restocking on Q-tips at resupply points. luxury item <laughs> and then the last thing is dr bronner's soap uh again i don't want to get noro and i'll be using a menstrual cup for my time of the month so i would like to make sure that i can have extra clean hands especially like before i'm preparing food just whenever i'm in like a high traffic area like shelters yada 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 it's good to have. I will probably get a smaller, I've been thinking of getting another one of these spray bottles and putting some in the spray bottle and then I can just refill the spray bottle with hand soap from bathrooms. Uh, thought about it. I don't know. It's not that much, but whatever. So that's my plan. I do have hand sanitizer in my um, chest strap pocket, shoulder strap pocket. So that's pretty much what I have for first aid right now.